Hey y'all, this is Dr. Carmen Corder with thedoctornurse.com and in this video I want to talk about a few anti-anxiety medications. Now I've uploaded an infographic to the pharmacology section of thedoctornurse.com so be sure and check that out and use that as a great reference guide to accompany this video. So let's go ahead and dive right in and talk about some of these classes of drugs. Now the first class that I have listed obviously are the benzodiazepines. Now this is the only class that I'm going to discuss that is prescribed exclusively for anxiety. The rest of these classes of drugs treat other things like depression or insomnia. So the benzodiazepines are your PAMs, all right? The PAMs calm you down. Those are your clonazepam, your lorazepam, all right? And the way that benzos work is they directly enhance the effects of the or the neurotransmitter GABA, right? GABA is a neurotransmitter that protects your brain from overstimulation. And so by enhancing the effects of GABA within the brain, the benzos really produce um, drowsiness, sedation, lethargy. Obviously the scariest of the symptoms is respiratory depression. And you also really have to watch for dependence and tolerance when your patient is taking benzodiazepines regularly. Benzodiazepines are they also the only class of drugs listed here that will work in an acute anxiety attack. All right, These are the heavy hitters. These are what we give people with severe anxiety, severe panic disorder. All right, But you do have to watch for that sedation. Uh, respiratory depression and also dependence. All right, so the next class are the atypical anxiolytics, and in this class, we're going to talk about Buspar. Now, Buspar is also prescribed a lot for depression because Buspar works to increase free levels of serotonin and dopamine, which are neurotransmitters that are thought to be low in patients who suffer with major depressive disorder. So that's how Buspar works. And really, by increasing serotonin and dopamine, those neurotransmitters are, they have a calming effect. So that's how Buspar works to correct anxiety. Buspar will not work for an acute anxiety attack. It will not work for severe anxiety, severe panic. So it's prescribed more for generalized anxiety to uh, control the disorder and not to be given during a, an acute uh, panic attack because it's just not going to work. All right, and as with all of the rest of these classes of drugs that I'm going to talk about, you've got to inform your patient of the GI side effects that they might experience. So they might experience some nausea so they can take it with food. They may experience constipation. So just kind of inform your patient of those side effects that they need to watch for. All right, so the next class are the antihistamines. Now, I know you're thinking like, well, that's Benadryl, but there is another antihistamine called hydroxyzine. The brand name for this is Vistaril, and providers will prescribe this medication a lot of times for anxiety. I've had hydroxyzine prescribed to me before for insomnia because the antihistamines directly block histamine receptors and by doing that they cause sedation and decrease anxiety. Now antihistamines are again they're not to be used for acute panic they're to be used more for mild anxiety or performance anxiety like a social anxiety. You do have to inform your patient of the possible GI effects also with antihistamines, you know, they dry you up. We use um, antihistamines to treat allergies. So your patient may experience dry eyes, dry mouth, constipation, um, abdominal cramps. So let them know of those side effects to watch for if they are prescribed hydroxyzine. Also headache. If you've ever taken a Benadryl, you know, to help you sleep or something, sometimes you wake up the next morning with a pounding headache that's another side effect of the antihistamines. All right, the next class, I've kind of lumped these in together because these classes of drugs are typically seen as being prescribed for depression, all right? 
And these are the SNRIs and the SSRIs. The SNRIs are the serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. The SSRIs are the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So your SNRIs increase both the levels of serotonin and norepinephrine. SSRIs increase the levels of serotonin. Now the prototype SNRI that's going to be prescribed for anxiety is duloxetine. The brand name is Cymbalta. This is also prescribed and will help treat neuropathic pain. The classic SSRI that we see as being prescribed for anxiety is Ascitalopram or Lexapro. Now both of these drugs can be prescribed for depression. So again, they're not for acute anxiety, severe anxiety. They're more for generalized anxiety disorders. And again, as with all of these drugs, except the benzos, you've got those pesky GI side effects that you need to teach your patient about. But usually taking these with food will help minimize those GI side effects. And then finally, we have non-selective beta blockers. Now, I feel like I need to explain what non-selective means. Now, we know that beta blockers block stimulation by epinephrine and norepinephrine. So, they work to calm your heart rate down, dilate blood vessels, and just overall reduce the workload of the heart. Now, non-selective means that the beta blocker doesn't differentiate between those beta receptors on the heart versus the beta receptors on the lungs, all right? So non-selective beta blockers are going to put patients more at risk for bronchoconstriction, and they are absolutely contraindicated in patients with respiratory disease. So a patient with asthma or severe COPD, no non-selective beta blockers for them, all right? Because it will absolutely send them into bronchoconstriction, respiratory distress, which is not a good thing. But what the non-selective beta blockers are great for is performance anxiety, social anxiety, to calm the symptoms that are associated with anxiety. Obviously, they're gonna slow down your heart rate. They're going to um, prevent tremors and you know the sweating and, and things like that that go along with performance anxiety. And the prototype non-selective beta blocker that's prescribed for anxiety is propranolol, all right? So, but you do have to monitor the patient, obviously, for uh, hypotension, for bradycardia, for dizziness, lightheadedness, you know, especially if they're not hypertensive to begin with, you know, if they have a normal blood pressure and you're giving them a beta blocker, then that's something that's gonna have to be monitored. But that just kind of sums up the most common classes of drugs that you're going to see prescribed to treat anxiety disorders. I hope you have found this video helpful and informative. If you're watching this from YouTube, head over to thedrnurse.com. There's so many more resources just like this video. And I hope you will head over there and subscribe subscribe to my youtube channel subscribe to the mailing list so you don't miss out on anything that's coming out from the doctor nurse and again thank you so so much for watching and i hope to hear from you guys really really soon